in this season, Tom's finally encountered an adversary, whom he couldn't overcome no matter what. Oswald Mosley, the man named by BBC as the most despicable Briton of the 20th century. Although Mosley, the leader of the British Union of Fascists, was promptly imprisoned at the beginning of World War II, he still enjoyed his later years in peace. So how would they deal with this historically notorious figure? The story continues from the previous episode. The newly emerged gang, the Billy Boys, sent their leader, McCavern, to Birmingham for negotiations. His boss behind the scenes is Mosley, who has already formed a partnership with Thomas, making it impossible for both sides to fight against each other. Back at the pub, Thomas still needs to handle some neighborhood matters. A woman approached him to complain about her husband, who is constantly drinking excessively and causing trouble. He went downstairs and killed them, strangled them, all three of them. And you've, um, you've, you've brought their bodies here today with you? Proof, Mr. Shelby. Their singing was the only pretty thing in my life. I don't care, my husband beats me. But not this. After much explanation, it turns out that it was just a misunderstanding, which made Arthur quite nervous. Next, Thomas is about to meet an Asian man who arrogantly takes a seat at the head of the table as soon as he enters. Shortly after, Finn calls Thomas, informing him that he is being held at gunpoint by a woman. This woman is the subordinate of the man in front of me. His name is Brilliant Chang, a drug lord who came to discuss business. He has a large shipment of contraband worth 1.19 million pounds, which encountered some issues at the docks. He needs Thomas's help to bypass inspections and store the goods in Thomas's warehouse for a few days before shipping them out of London and ultimately selling them in the United States. If successful, Thomas will receive a reward of 25 pounds. Faced with such a substantial sum, Arthur and Polly hesitated. One is because I don't want to offend the Chinese, and the other is I don't want to touch contraband. However, Thomas plans to assign this task to Michael. Not only can they earn a large amount of money, but it will also clear Michael's suspicion of being a traitor. Back in the office, Abarama has been waiting for a while. He has a plan to get revenge on McCavern for his son's sake, but Thomas tells him that they are now preparing to work together and he can seek revenge however he likes after they finish their business. As compensation, Thomas promises to arrange a marriage between Polly and Abarama. At the upcoming birthday party, Abarama will propose in public and Polly will surely find this romantic and accept his proposal. Abarama considers the plan and agrees. Later, Mosley also pays visit and is invited to the party. He has already investigated Thomas's wife, Lizzie, who used to work as a prostitute. It may even be possible that as a younger man in Birmingham, I came across her. My friends and I would sometimes go to nightclubs in the south of town. Well, if you recognize her, maybe you can talk about old times, I... Maybe. If we have met before, your wife and I could even renew our acquaintance. Yeah. I researched your wife and your wife's younger sister, and your wife's stepmother, Lady Curzon, all of whom you are fucking. Faced with Mosley's disrespectful remarks, Thomas refuses to back down and exposes equally damaging information about him. Mosley is not angry either. Since both sides now know each other's little secrets, the subsequent cooperation becomes even smoother. The next day, Polly hands over the task of transporting the contraband to her son, Michael, and advises him to seize this opportunity and perform well. However, contraband is a harmful substance, and Michael hesitates, wanting to discuss it with his wife, Gina. Thomas decided to first sell some goods to the Billy Boys for them to taste. However, McCavern unexpectedly wanted to pay with a check. Thomas believes that the gang's check may not be usable. 
He required that an acquaintance of both parties must act as a guarantor before he could sign. Of course, this person is Oswald. After the negotiations were completed and Cavern couldn't help but sigh. Oh, you mean you're bold enough to skin the Chinese? <laughs> you have some kind of death wish, Mr. Shelby. The party was held as scheduled and Michael also mentioned to his wife Thomas's delivery task for him. Thomas had already negotiated with a supplier in China and secured a long-term partnership that could earn him one million pounds a year. China was thrilled to hear about the potential to earn so much money. However, she was not a good person herself, as she had been pushing Michael to seize power. Thomas found Oswald and handed him the check from McCavern, asking him to sign it. The real purpose was to retain key evidence of his collusion with the Billy Boys gang. Oswald, of course, understood the implications, but he still signed it to show his sincerity. When he came to the hall, he said hello to Lizzie, the protagonist of the party. Lizzie, I said Oswald Mosley. I'm sure, Mr. Shelby, in the spirit of our honest relationship, you won't mind me saying, it was a bottle of champagne and an evening well spent. Actually, it was an evening wasted. For the champagne and brandy you bought me. As I recall, it was the booze that put you to sleep a little prematurely. The scene is very embarrassing. The ballet performance began, and in this romantic atmosphere, Abirama successfully proposed to Polly. During the performance, a car arrived and Arthur went to see who it was. To his surprise, it was Linda, who wanted to avenge her friend. Now you peaky blinders or rot! In fucking hell! Arthur. She threatened to shoot but Polly fired first. Arthur carried Linda inside to treat her gunshot wound, luckily only hitting her arm. Afterward, Mosley delivered an inflammatory speech at the party, advocating for Britain, first in announcing the upcoming establishment of a new political party, the Fascist Alliance, which would lead the country towards a bright future. That when the new decade begins, there will be the birth of a new political party which will speak for you. <laughs> This party, this new movement, this revolution will be called the British Union of Fascists. What the fuck are you doing dealing with a man like that, Tommy? Yeah, ain't enough to trust me. Among other things, after the speech, Musley warned Thomas not to have any more public shooting incidents like tonight and demanded that all Jewish employees be fired from the company. He also wanted Thomas to hand over control of the Northern race course, which was under the Razor Party's control, to McCavern. These demands seemed insignificant to them, considering their plan to control the entire country. Thomas reluctantly agreed. Musley also revealed his plan to divide Britain into three parts. The northern part would be controlled by the Billy Boys, responsible for driving out anti-fascist demonstrations. The central part would be under the control of Thomas's Razor Party. As for the southern part, Mosley hadn't made a decision yet. When we succeed, even the king will not be above us. Power. Like plugging into the mains. A lighthouse beam. Your millions of dollars safe in Switzerland and access to every dirty-minded swan in England. Later, Musley slept with Ballerina who was dancing at the party. When he saw Lizzie, he started teasing her again. The Ballerina and I were wondering whether perhaps you might want to join us. If I told Tommy you wouldn't see the morning. Oh, I doubt that very much. You see, he is being seduced just as you were. Tom. What? Tommy, I swear to God you're bad. That man is fucking evil. Lizzie, I'm only doing this to bring the bastard down. 
On the other side, the relationship between Arthur and Linda has come to an end. The next day, Thomas invited his superior, Younger, to his office and gave him an envelope containing evidence of Mosley and the Billy Boys collusion, as well as a list of politicians who had already aligned themselves with the fascists. Their organization planned to declare its establishment on January 2nd, and preventing it would be a great achievement. However, Younger faced pressure from his superiors. Mosley's previous speech had received high praise from the media. I can't tell him the source of this information. It seemed like a difficult task. Nevertheless, Younger decided to take the envelope and head downstairs. But as soon as he got into the car, an explosion occurred, killing him instantly. Meanwhile, Arthur and his men went to the docks to receive the contraband, but the contact didn't show up. Suddenly, gunshots rang out, and it was unclear who had leaked the information. Another organization called the Titanic Gang also got involved. Arthur rushed out with a gun. Arthur, they're gone. Fortunately, the contraband was not taken. It became evident that there was a traitor within the Shelby company. Thomas came to the mental hospital that day and met his former sniper comrades. This person had been mentally unstable and had severe violent tendencies since the war ended. However, seeing his former commanding officer, he appeared relatively calm. Thomas had maintained correspondence with him. Thomas gave him two choices either take poison and euthanasia, or wait a few days for him to come and rob the prison. After the deed was done, he was needed to help kill someone. This sniper had always dreamed of escaping, so he agreed to Thomas's plan. McCavern found Thomas. Now McCavern in charge of the northern part, and Thomas has control over the central part. The best candidate for the southern part was originally Alfie, the head of the Jewish gang. But as a Jewish person, he would definitely not support fascism, so it had to be handed over to the Italian gang. For this reason, Thomas had to give up the business in the South as well. At this time, Arthur and his group returned with contraband. McCavern still had some resentment towards Arthur for leaving him with a hand grenade, but now they had to cooperate. Hey Arthur, someday, yes, you and me. Oh, Tommy, hi. Fascists. Mm. Look at them. I fucking hate them. Always have done. I do. You're a man after me own heart. Someday, Mr. Shelby. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. Yeah. After McCavern left, Thomas revealed his plan. When Musley gives a speech, Thomas, as his second in command, will stand by his side. He has already found a sniper in advance and will kill Musley when the time comes. Thomas can then take advantage of the situation and become the new leader of the Fascist Alliance. And then I will take over as leader of the party. And you and Abba Rama can take care of that bastard McCavern. It's going to be a busy few weeks, brother. Yeah. In the evening, Thomas visited another high-level government official, who was Churchill. They have been working together for many years and based on Thomas's recent actions, Churchill has guessed his plan to undermine the fascist alliance from within. Churchill is supportive because Musley is likely to trigger a war. Finn and Billy's gambling business has been going smoothly. Billy's attitude has changed from resistance to acceptance, and he has become good friends with Finn. But Arthur warned Finn, you two can talk about anything, but you must not talk about the family business. All the core members gather at the bar for a family meeting. Thomas first welcomes the new member, Abarama. He and Polly will officially hold their wedding in a few weeks. In addition, he also wanted to pay tribute to Younger, who would have become a member of their family, because Ada and Younger have already had feelings for each other. The child Ada was carrying 
was his. Then he talked about reaccepting Michael. Michael thought that transporting contraband would be highly profitable and could become the main source of income for the company in the future, so he wanted to establish a subsidiary in the United States. He can rely on his many years of contacts in the United States and his wife's family's experience in the contraband business. He handed the plan to Thomas. Here is my proposal, a full restructuring of the company. Take a look at the future, Tommy. At least read it with an open mind. It's cold in here, Michael. <laughs> However, Thomas threw it directly into the bonfire. Michael also directly stated that Americans do not want to do business with criminal gangs. You remnants of the old era, it's time for you to exit the stage of history. But Thomas didn't want to argue further, and the two of them broke off from then on. Tommy, mom's leaving. John's dead. Arthur needs help. Ada's man was killed in your own backyard because you fucked up! Go on, Tom. Go on, cop me. Like the good old days. Or... See this for what it is. A natural succession that someday must happen. I gave you an opportunity, Michael. You betrayed me. Don't be here when I get back. You? You can tell your family. Let me guess. Don't fuck with the Peaky Blinders. Polly slapped her son. Michael's betrayal made her, as the second in command of the family, very difficult. And she also knew that he must have been influenced by Gina to do this. After Michael and his wife left, the others continued their meeting. In a few days, it will be the day when Mosley announces the establishment of fascism. On the day of the speech, the sniper will be hidden in the arranged position for assassination. Because the sniper is a psychopath with violent tendencies. Even if he is caught later, it will not be suspected of Thomas. At most, he will be sent back to the mental hospital. McCavern and his subordinates will be responsible for the security of the speech, and Abarama can take the opportunity to avenge his son. Thomas will take over from Mosley and continue speaking, becoming the leader of the British Fascist Alliance. I'll be down on one knee cradling his head while the laugh drains from him. Then I'll make a speech saying how the cause he died for must continue. Continue safe in my hands. After Mosley's death, all the police in Birmingham will be sent to investigate. Uncle Charlie can take this opportunity to transport the contraband out of the city and get a reward of 250,000 pounds. After assigning the tasks, Thomas and Arthur found the bar manager. It turns out that the previous attack by the Titanic gang and Younger's death were all caused by this manager leaking information. For so many years, he has been making money by betraying the Razor Party. Without hesitation, Thomas shot and killed this traitor. After that, he went to see Alfie, the head of the Jewish gang. He miraculously survived a gunshot wound to the face before. This time, Thomas wanted to borrow some manpower from the Jewish gang to help create chaos. Alfie would definitely support dealing with the fascists, but if he wanted him to help, he would have to pay. How much you pay in? So we might do it for the cause, Alfie. Oh, fuck off. Each man will get 20 pound, you'll get 5,000. That 20 will not be enough for my last to step inside that fucking shit out. It has to be 25 at least. Back in the office, Polly looked desolate. Her son's betrayal made her lose interest in staying in the company, so she decided to resign and retire. Finally, the day of the speech arrived. Fascist posters were posted everywhere in the streets and alleys. Mosley also shouted slogans to eliminate Jews as he entered the venue. On the other side, Arthur accepted the hitmen arranged by Alfie and placed them among the crowd, waiting for the right moment to act. The sniper was also hidden in a secret location, ready to strike. Finn also wanted to participate in the operation. Before leaving, he told Billy about the assassination of Mosley and gave him some money to go to the city to have fun. However, Billy picked up the phone next to him. There was a riot outside the auditorium. Jesse and the communists were protesting and demonstrating. 
but they were arrested by several police officers. Thomas rescued her and placed her in a room. And he told Jesse that he would sabotage the fascists from the inside. Soon, Mosley took the stage amid enthusiastic applause. Thomas stood to the side of the podium. Mosley's speech was very inflammatory, and the emotions of everyone in the audience were stirred up. At this time, the Jewish gang's hitmen entered as planned, causing a riot. The time was almost up and Thomas gave the signal. Just as the sniper was about to take action, someone suddenly appeared behind him, killed him with a silenced pistol. Abarama, who had been ambushing in secret, failed to assassinate him and was stabbed to death by the masked man who appeared behind him. Only Arthur discovered the anomaly in time and killed the attacker. Thomas was stunned and had no idea where the enemy came from. Mosley had no idea what was happening and reminded Thomas to leave quickly and pay attention to his safety. Thomas was completely defeated this time. He didn't even know who the enemy was. This is how the story of season five ends. Thomas's plan was perfectly resolved without disturbing Mosley. This enemy is no small matter, so who can know this information? Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.